Uh, Paul Williams here from the Asian Game coming to you live from uh, Victoria Square in the heart of Adelaide here. Uh, it's a beautiful winter's day. The sun's out. You can see the giant football behind me here in the heart of Adelaide. Women's World Cup fever has certainly gripped uh, Australia and Adelaide where I am. China is based here in Adelaide. The hotel is about two or three minutes in that direction. Um, they play their next game here against Haiti on Friday evening. Need to get all three points in that game to ensure that they give themselves a chance to progress through to the knockout rounds. They'll face England in their final group stage match. That will be an enormous challenge. That will again be here in Adelaide. But yeah, Women's World Cup fever has certainly gripped Australia and New Zealand. I was lucky enough to be in Sydney for that opening game between uh, Australia and the Republic of Ireland. 75,000 at the Olympic Stadium. Fantastic atmosphere. And what we're seeing right around the country is enormous crowds and enormous interest, perhaps exceeding what people thought coming into the tournament, particularly in New Zealand. I know there were some concerns over some slow ticket sales. Uh, you know, probably 75% of the tickets have been sold here in Australia, but they've now exceeded uh, their target of 1.5 million tickets sold. It'd be fascinating to see what number they actually get to. Um, with in, in terms of tickets sold, there's some headline games coming up. China, England is certainly one of those here in Adelaide, the European champions against the Asian champions. That will be a fascinating matchup, uh, no doubt. Massive TV numbers back in England and uh, in China as well. Um, it's only a small stadium here in Adelaide, only fits in about 13,500, so that will be completely jam-packed as the, uh, the English fans invade town. And there's a lot of Chinese that live here in Adelaide as well, either... You know, people that have come to move to Australia and live in Adelaide or a lot of Chinese students coming to university as well. So I've got no doubt there'll be a lot of support for China at that game, which will be fantastic to see. Um, in terms of the Asian teams, we've seen Japan get back-to-back uh, -back wins. They defeated Costa Rica today. The fairy tale story is the Philippines. Their 1-0 win over New Zealand yesterday. I almost shed a tear literally watching that game. I know a lot of people involved in the Filipino football community it was a remarkable achievement for them to get a win in just their second ever match at the FIFA Women's World Cup. Uh, Serena Bolden, I had the chance to speak to her before the tournament. Delighted for her that she became her country's first ever goal scorer at, uh, at the Women's World Cup. And to see what it meant to the players, what it meant to the fans, what it meant to the people. You look at the, the scenes back in the Philippines, in Manila and all across the country at the live watch parties that they were having. Um, absolute delirium. So um, fantastic. Absolutely delighted for them. Uh, got more matches coming uh, across the next couple of days. Australia play Nigeria up in Brisbane tomorrow. More injury news. Mary Fowler, uh, it will be out of that game with uh, concussion injury. Unfortunately, she was expected to replace Sam Kerr and now she's on the sidelines herself as well. So there's a lot going on here at the FIFA Women's World Cup. Um, two days China play here against Haiti. I'm looking forward to that game. I'll give you more updates uh, as we go along throughout the tournament from all different spots around here in Adelaide.